I'm Maddie, and today I'm looking in the garden for two cats. Have you seen them anywhere? They're not under the tree, and they're not on their favourite spot on the fence. I know how we can find them. I wonder if they're hungry. Cats make great pets, don't they? The cats like to be outside in the garden, hiding and exploring, but there is something else they like. Lunch. What's this, ready, steady Paul? What's that? This is Madison, and this is Malika. And there's something really clever that means the cats can come in and out of the house whenever they like. Do you know what it is? That's right, it's a cat flap. It's like a little door just for cats. But do you know how a cat flap works? Let's find out. How does it work? A cat flap. To show you how a cat flap works, let's see if we can get Madison and Malika to use it. They like to sneak in and out throughout the day. So I'm going to set up two special cameras. One on the inside and one outside. They like to come out to play after they've had their lunch. Watch what happens. Our cameras are all set up. Oh look, here's Madison. Is she going to get through? Yes, she's in. Whoa, that was fast, wasn't it? I tell you what, let's watch it again, this time in slow motion. Watch how Madison pushes it open with her nose. Did you hear the sound that the cat flap made when the door opened and closed? Listen again. It sounds like a click, doesn't it? The cat flap opens like that for Madison and Malika, but look what happens if I try to open it. Does it work? No. Why do you think that is? That's because this cat flap will only work for Madison and Malika. But how does the cat flap know who they are? It's because of this. It's called a microchip and this, a sensor on the cat flap. Let's see how it works. Both Madison and Malika had a microchip put underneath their fur by the vet. It didn't hurt them and it's very small, so they can't feel it at all. Their microchips have the same special number on them. This number is also on the sensor inside the cat flap, so they match. When one of the cats goes up to their cat flap, the sensor inside scans the microchip by their neck, just like how we scan our shopping at the supermarket checkout. When it sees there is a match, a small lock inside the cat flap is unlocked. So when they push the flap with their head, the flap swings open to let them through. The same happens when they want to come home. But the cat flap only opens for Madison and Malika. If any other cats come along, they can't get in because they don't have the same matching number. The microchip is tiny. It's only a bit bigger than a grain of rice. In fact, it's so small, I've got a special camera with me, a microscope, which will let us see it in close up. Oh, look at that. Isn't it incredible that something so tiny can open and close a cat flap? To show you what the microchip looks like inside a cat, I have a special photo called an X-ray. An X-ray is a special picture that lets us see what we look like under our skin. And this is an X-ray of a cat. Look, you can see under the cat's skin. Look at all of its bones. And can you see that white blob there? That is the microchip. It's tiny, isn't it? Madison and Malika love their cat flap. They're in and out all day. What was your favourite bit about seeing how a cat flap worked? Do you remember what you call the special device that goes under Madison and Malika's fur and lets them in the cat flap? 
That's right, it's a microchip. Did you hear the sound the cat flap made when it opened? And did you see the x-rays showing the microchip in the cat's body? So next time you see a cat use a cat flap, you'll know just how it works. Oh, her fur is so lovely and soft. The fur helps keep the cat warm when it's outside, but we don't have fur, do we? So how do we stay warm? I like to wear a woolly hat. But do you know where wool comes from? How is a woolly hat made? Let's find out. How is it made? A woolly hat. Your woolly hat starts off in a place like this, a sheep farm. And that's because the wool that makes your woolly hat actually comes from a sheep's coat. And there are a lot of sheep here. Here we go. <laughs> This is Lewis and he's going to show us how you get wool from a sheep. The first thing Lewis does is to clip the woolly coat off the sheep and to do that he uses this. It's called a shear to do something called shearing. The sheep are sheared one by one. The sheep is held very still and Lewis snips away quickly so that all the woolly coat is cut off. A shear is a bit like a pair of scissors. Can you see? Lewis is using it to cut the wool off the sheep, but it doesn't hurt the sheep at all. It's just like having a haircut. Can you hear the sound of the shears? What does it sound like? I think it sounds just like a small engine. And this is what we're left with. The wool that comes off the sheep is called a fleece. The sheep will grow a new woolly coat, just like how you grow your hair back after you've had a haircut. But this fleece doesn't look much like a woolly hat, does it? To find out what happens next, I have to go somewhere else. This is a mill where they make all sorts of things from wool. I bought a fleece with me, so let's go and see what happens next. When the fleeces arrive at the mill, they are weighed and then sorted. Sue here is going through and sorting each fleece by hand. She's picking out any mucky bits that got onto the sheep whilst she was in the field. This fleece here has a bit of blue spray paint on it. That's from where the farmer has sprayed a number onto the sheep so he didn't lose it in the field. <laughs> washed, rinsed, and then the water is squeezed out by rollers. The wool is now clean. It just needs to be dried out in a tumble dryer. You might have one at home, but this is a lot bigger. After the fleece has had a really good wash, it's put into this machine. It's called a Fear Nought machine, and I think it looks a bit like a green dinosaur with big teeth. The teeth pull apart the fleece to get rid of any knots, a bit like when you brush your hair. On the next machine, the wool is fed through huge rollers, which are covered in smaller teeth. The teeth brush out the wool and also make sure that any last bits of hay or seeds from the field can be taken out. But everything's happening so fast. Let's use my special slow motion camera to slow everything down and get a better look. Look at the teeth brushing out the wool. Isn't it clever? This is what the wool looks like when it comes off the rollers. These are called Slubbings, which is my new favourite word. It's beginning to look like the wool you might make a hat with, but it's not ready yet because it breaks too easily. It's not strong enough. So first, it has to be 
fun. The wool is added to this big spinning frame, and as each piece is pulled out, it's twisted round and round. And at the other end, we get this. It's called yarn. The yarn is quite thin. To give it extra strength and make it thicker, four strands are twisted together. When the wool comes off the twisting machine, it looks like this. You can see how much stronger and thicker it is. This is called Clyde yarn, and it's what people used to knit with. Things like jumpers, scarves, or woolly hats. But not everything we wear is the same colour as a sheep. So what we need is a bit of colour. This is the part of the factory where the yarn can be turned into lots of different colours. And this stage is called dyeing. A blue liquid called dye is added to hot water to make it blue. Now the yarn is being dipped into the blue water where it's going to stay for three whole hours. Three hours later, the wool is ready to come out. <laughs> and when it's finished, it looks like that. What an amazing blue colour. Here is lots of wool that has already been turned into different colours and rolled into small balls. Now, I think it's time to make a woolly hat. But do you know what colour hat I usually wear? That's right, a red hat. So, we need some red wool. Paula is making me a woolly hat and she's doing something called knitting. You might know someone who knits and it's very clever and Paula's very fast at it. Here we are, a brand new bright red woolly hat. How do I look? What did you like most about seeing how a woolly hat was made? Do you remember what you call the wool when it's been taken off the sheep? That's right, it's called a fleece. Did you hear the sound of the sheep being sheared? And did you see the teeth brush out the wool on my slow motion camera? So the next time you wear a hat, scarf or woolly jumper, remember that it was made from yarn that came from a sheep's woolly coat. Thank you, sheep. <laughs> See you next time.